I'm Randy Wilburn, Director of Education at Zwei Group. Welcome to our online Z-Learning course, How You Can Be More Successful Through Doing Better Presentations. This one-hour continuing education program will help you to develop and strengthen your presentation skills. You may not end up creating a work of art like Steven Spielberg, but you will learn some of the fundamentals of great presentations and how to capture the imagination and minds of your audience. We've come up with a range of simple ideas and hacks to make your presentation seem larger than life. Whether you are presenting internally to your team, meeting with stakeholders on a project, or presenting to a client, we have some ideas that will help you create a winning presentation. Today, we are with Zweig Group Chairman and Industry Expert, Mark Zweig. Mark is the author of several books for the design industry, including Human Resource Management, the Complete Guidebook for Design Firms. Mark is also the publisher and editorial writer for the Zweig Letter, a newsletter for the design industry run by Zweig Group continuously since 1992. In addition to all of this, Mark is perfectly suited to discuss this next topic as he has worked with a variety of firms over the years to fine tune or create presentations for some major design projects. We'll get to hear about some of those today. Let's see if we can learn a thing or two from him. Hey, Mark, thanks for joining us. Hi, Randy. How are you? Good, good, good. good. Man, this, uh, I'm excited to do this topic. Uh, this is another Z-Learning course that we're, we're getting to run through. And why don't you take us step by step through some simple ways that our audience of engineers and architects can develop and fine tune their presentation skills? Where, where do you want to start? Well, you know, when it comes to creating presentations, anything for that matter, you think it's important to know who you are presenting to and do your homework. Sure. I think that's a common mistake. Um, you really have to know who's on the selection committee or who's making the hiring decision so you can understand what's important to them and, and speak their language and speak to the things that they will see as... as uh, critical to making the decision that they're about to make. Okay. Can you give some examples of maybe some homework that you've done in the past that has aided you successfully on, on some uh, presentations? Well, I think it's good to know like what the background is of the individuals. Um, you know, if you know someone went to a particular school, for example, then you may be able to reference something related to their alma mater that would seem as if you were um, favorably impressed with it. Okay. Just as one of many examples that you could give. You know, you could say something nice about a campus or about a sports team that came from that school. Mm -hmm. um, that, that's, that's one example, but I think there are many others. Um, being able to have some kind of connection with the people. Yeah. You know, maybe their kids go to the same private school yours do. Um, Maybe they work somewhere that you also worked or where you know someone that you can drop a name that perhaps would be, uh, you know, show that you're connected and you have some connection to them. All these things are critical. I mean, really, I, when you think of it today, there's really no excuse for not getting as much information as you can at the onset. I mean, you have Dr. Google. You have so I'm telling many, you, you the so internet is so great for that, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, I yeah. I mean, it can be a, a little creepy at times going on Facebook, but the bottom line is there, yep. there, there should never be a problem gaining as much information as you need prior to getting the um, presentation put together. Absolutely. So, so you also think it's a good idea, and I, I love this expression, and you always tell me this and remind me this remind me of this when whenever doing anything is to start from scratch but especially with a presentation oh, kind of throw everything uh, you've done in the past and just start from a blank sheet of paper why it, is that 
because otherwise you're going to waste so much time saying the same old crap that's probably in your proposal or qual document. You don't want to recycle all that stuff. All the cliches, all the platitudes, all the 27 million jobs you've done just like this before. I mean, you've got to get something new. I like to really focus on what's unique about this particular project or this contract right. and this client and, and, and build on that. Yeah. Um, you know, starting with a clean sheet of paper, you're not going to be saying the same old stuff. Yeah. And that'll keep everybody more energized. As soon as you fall into the sort of rote recitation of past gobbledygook, <laughs> um, you're going to sound like a robot and you're, you'll lose your audience, in my opinion. Okay. Keep it fresh. Keep it new. You know? Yeah. So a blank sheet of paper is definitely a good way to get started. And, and I think it's important to... Um, to understand that that if you can if you can not rehash the old pro, uh, pro, um, proposals that you've done the old presentations that you've done um, you'll have a better chance of possibly impressing somebody with something new. Yeah, everybody's got the same old story. You know, here's our team, here's our project manager, here's the backgrounds of everybody, here's all the jobs we've done. Um, for the state of Arkansas. Here's all the jobs we've done for the city of Little Rock. Here's all the um, uh, city hall projects we've done. Here's all the renovation of city hall projects that we've ever done. You know, it just goes on and on. And here's the QAQC process that we've never once followed, but we'll describe to you in, <laughs> in depth. Um, it, it'd be a lot better, I think, to just start out like answering fundamental questions like, why hire us for this project? Yeah, and design gonna, everything around that. Yeah, and we're going to talk about that in a minute. I don't want to. I want to jump yep. too far ahead, but that that is a. It's a really good point, and I think you've given um, our our viewers uh, a, a little bit to work with there. You know, you also said don't be afraid to be different. Yes. What do you mean by different? I mean be different. You know, and especially the lower your odds are of getting the job, the more you should be willing to take chances. Okay. I'll, I'll give you a great example. I saw a presentation once. I, I was working with a company. It's a, it's a very well-known big A, small E firm. Okay. And uh, they were going after a, a training facility for um, a major league baseball team. It was in Florida, a training facility. They really didn't have good experience to, to get this job. Somehow they, they got themselves on the short list. There were three other companies. They were all had tons and tons of, you know, sports facilities experience for baseball teams. They were the one that didn't. They were the lightest by far. And so what they did, which I thought was very interesting, and I saw this presentation, every year they have an in-house awards ceremony for things that their people did. So they rehashed this presentation for 400 people in the firm. It was really cool. And what the presentation uh, uh, idea was that, uh, that they, they gave an award out internally for was somebody brings in a boom box. This is prior to the days right. of, you know, being able to have electronic. Your iPod and yeah. iPhone and all that. So. so somebody walks in with a boom. First, somebody walks in with a stool. They set that down in front of the, of the selection committee. They go back, they come back with a boom box. They put the boom box on the stool and push play, and then walk out of the room. And what you hear is a baseball announcer. And it's like, all right, everybody. And they got a professional baseball announcer mm -hmm. to do this. They're, the other teams have been up to bat. They've made some hits and they've made some errors. And now here comes the championship team, ABC Associates and Bob Johnson, project manager. And it's all, <laughs> cheering and clapping and the guy runs in in a baseball uniform oh man okay yeah. and then it announced each one of the players in the lineup and they all came in wearing matching uniforms really okay? they got that job did i would imagine so. so but think about what everybody else did here's all the jobs we've done for the yankees here's all the jobs we've done for other baseball pro baseball <laughs> teams yawn 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 right okay right, right. And they just completely differentiated themselves. Yeah. I mean, I can think of a million different examples of where people have done something super radical. Yeah. And, yeah. and it, it, you got to do it, you know? Yeah. 
Well, I mean, it's true what they say, and I've seen the T-shirt um, that people have worn. It says "Dare to be different." And um, what? Yeah, or why be normal? The bumper it, sticker. Exactly. Exactly. I, I'll, I'll tell you another one. We did. We did a video in the Golden Gate Bridge uh, seismic retrofitting, mm -hmm. and uh, we had sound with it, and we had the image of the Pinto that went off the Bay Bridge when the upper deck collapsed in right. Loma Prieta. Right. And it was like, you know, in Loma Prieta. <laughs> and then that that footage right there. Right. Very dramatic. I don't yeah. think anybody else did that. Really? Um, you know, what well, could have been uh, construed as too controversial. Yeah. See, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, the aftermath of a of an earthquake like that, and uh, you know, one where people were injured. Did it work? But uh, but it worked. Oh yeah, it worked. <laughs> it worked. They got yeah. the job, and I oh, would yeah. imagine that was a big job. I remember that Golden Gate Bridge seismic. There retro were three thing, so. sections of it, and we got two of them. Wow. wow. Um, I mean, those the team that I was working with. Projects. Yeah, that was a big project. Yeah, that's it was about awesome. an eight and a half million dollar total design fee, which is a good fee, obviously. Yeah. First time a cable stayed suspension bridge has ever been seismically retrofitted, by the way. Wow. With the Golden Gate Bridge. Huh. But anyway, we can talk more about that because yes. there's other lessons in, right. that, in yeah. that presentation I'd like to get to. Oh, good. Well, we certainly will get to that. Um, I would imagine that rehashing the proposal in the presentation is a no-no in your book. It's everybody does it, and they've already. It's already gotten you that far. Yeah. Give me yeah. something new. Yeah. I don't need to see all that same crap again. Yeah. So it's, it's almost like leave the proposal at home. It's a waste. It got you that far. You don't need, those people have all seen that. So Why do, you, do I want to repeat that? I don't understand. People are preoccupied with doing that. So I would, I would throw this out there and I, and I would, I would guess that some people struggle with the simple fact that they, they do that because they don't have enough to say in their presentation, so they added a filler. I don't know. Sometimes I've seen people have too much to say, but it's too much that's not relevant. Right. right. You know, where you'll have somebody that just runs away with the presentation. Like, here's our structural engineering consultant. He's going to start showing us little tiny little cross sections that we wouldn't be able to see unless we were 12 inches away, and he's showing <laughs> it to an audience that's 30 feet away. Yeah. I've yeah. had that and go on and on about details that nobody cares about. That's bad. Yeah. Um, that's another matter. You, you really have to make sure you know what all your sub consultants and various presentation team members are going to say before they land there yeah. doing it. Yeah. You know, but yeah, yeah rehash. I, I don't know why people do that so, so often, it's but they good. sure do. Yeah, and we'll and we'll talk a little bit about that last point that you just made about um, people not going through their uh, presentation materials beforehand, and we're going to talk about some other ways to to better prepare yourself when you actually do a presentation. And part of it is practice. Practice does make perfect, and we'll spend a little bit of time on that. Um, one of the big things with presentations, and even even writing for that matter, is answering the question why. Yes. Like why hire our firm. You said that pre that presentation should be designed with this key idea in mind. Can you expand on that thought? Absolutely. Everyone talks about how many years of experience they have or how many registered professionals they have or how many jobs they've done for the client before. The implication is these are good reasons to hire us because you'll save time and you'll save money and you'll save headaches. Right. But why not just come out and say it yeah. instead of implying it? Yeah. Okay. I, I've designed entire presentations around why hire our firm using the five paragraph term paper model. So you start out, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to tell you why you should hire us for this project, why we will, we are by far and away the best company to meet your needs. And then you tell them why, boom, boom, boom. And then you tell them in the end, now we've told you why we're the best firm. To hire us. Any questions? Right. I mean, it, you know, tell them what you're going to tell them, tell them, and then tell them what you told them applies here. And it's so much better than here's our team, here's our project manager, here's a list of all the surveying equipment we have, here's a list of all the software programs we have, here's all the jobs we've done before just like it. And I'll give you the exact square footages, number of floors, the size of the, of the structural bays, whatever, okay? That's what everybody else does. Yeah, it's a and yawner. It, it's a yawner, and and you, you know, you never come out and give people a, a real reason, explicit reason for why they should hire you. Yeah. Just tell them. They don't all get it anyway. You know. Right. 
Right, right. Well, that's a major struggle with a lot of firms, and I, I think I, I think a lot of times firms just have identity crisis. They don't know who they are, and, and so they have a hard time articulating the value add that they bring to the table. Oh, yeah, we're a good firm, but there's a lot of other good firms you're talking with. <laughs> right. Bullshit. Yeah, exactly. I never let, I've had people no. say that. We're the best fans. firm, and we're the only don't firm you should be working with. I, I'm so. like, what the heck are you saying that for? Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. we're so introverted. We're so afraid to, to you know, tell people why they should hire us. It, yeah. We'll do everything but right that in yeah. presentations yeah i mean it's okay Seems. to respect your, your 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 the peer firms out there sure but if you don't believe that you're the best firm out there then you you're 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 it's pretty much a lost cause i think so you've got to believe that you're the best or it'll come across subconsciously yeah yeah this won't be good at all so you also mentioned that uh you should understand the client's wants and needs Right. I mean, the, your firm, your firm has wants and needs when it comes to dealing with a presentation and presenting a project, because obviously you want to get the work. But but you, you have to look at the client's wants and needs. How do you make sure that you get that information? It, it's not just the clients. It's also the end user. OK. What their wants and needs are. And the way you get it is twofold. One, by asking them. And, 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 and by working with them, obviously, if you work with them, you're going to have some idea what their wants and needs are. But the other way is just doing original research. It's so crucial to do that. Um, I'll give you a good example. Um, so I had a client, they were architects, and they were trying to get a student union renovation project on a campus. Okay. And what they did was they sent uh, young intern architects out to campus to interview students all over campus and ask them some very simple questions. Do you go to the student union? <laughs> yes or no? If you go, how often do you go? Yeah. How long do you stay when you're there? What do you typically do while you're there? What would make the student union better uh, for you? What would make it more functional or make you like to be there more often. Well, then when they came into the presentation, they can say to the client, hey, we had 124 interviews with students on the campus, on your campus, and this is what they told us about the student union. These are the things they like, this is what they don't like, here's how often they go, this is how long they spend when they're there. Uh, you know, I mean, dynamite. Yeah. So much better, really focused on the needs of that client and understanding what those are. And you know they went further than that because they're very observant people. So they looked around the student union. One of the, the other things they did that was really cool in their presentation is they noticed and they had pictures of various bad things in the student union. So they did their homework. And I've seen this tactic used for as long as I've been in this business. Mm -hmm. I, mem I remember 35 years ago going up against Sasaki on a comprehensive urban plan project in Memphis and Sasaki went around and took photos of everything ugly in the 16 block area that we were concerned with. Here's where the water's standing in the curb and gutter. Here's where 10 million power lines converge. You know, they pointed out all the problems. We weren't smart enough to do that. We were all like, here's all our disciplines. Here's all the jobs we've done for the city of Memphis. Here's all the urban planning jobs we've right. done. It was all BS, okay? Right. They focused right on what your needs are. Yeah. You have standing water here. You need curb and gutter drainage improvements in this area. Right. You need to bury your utilities. This is horrendous. People were like, oh my God, that's so ugly. Yeah. You know, so they focused on the real needs. They had the photos. But anyway, these people did the same thing. So they take photos in the student union. And one of the things they noticed was very dirty carpet in the hall areas. Oh, yeah. Because people go get a Coke, they spill it. The janitorial staff, as good as they may tr be and as hard as they may try, it's, you, you can't always get all these spots out, okay? Mm -hmm. So giant spots there, and they're like, look, we know you're selling this campus to parents. They're talking to the selection committee. It's right. critical. Parents are going to come to the student union inevitably during their campus visit. Everybody does. you got to get something to eat or whatever or the, the student tour guides take you through the student union. It's one of the first things I visited when I visited Howard University the first time. Exactly. Yeah. And, and if you see, if the parents see big, dirty spots on the carpet, they're going to think, ah, oh, this is not such a nice school. Right. So that's why we're, when we redo this, we're going to use carpet squares 
And here, check some of these out. And they pass the carpet squares out to the selection committee. Now the selection committee is looking at, oh yeah, these are great. If they don't show the dirt now, but even if they did, we just rip one up, stick another one down, we're done. That's it. Looks perfect once again. No reason to be spotted. Hmm. And so that's the kind of stuff I think that really sticks with people in a presentation that's so much more valuable than, uh, you know, here's everything we've done before. Yeah. Yeah. Well, obviously, understanding the client's wants and needs are, are, are going to be the lifeblood of the ultimate success of your presentation. One other thing while we're on that subject, and um, it's good we always have these talks beforehand. Uh, so you absolutely. have, uh, you, you know what's on my mind. So I appreciate that. But um, another thing that we didn't, uh, that we didn't really talk about is, is this, that you need to start early. Right. If you're really doing your job as business developers, it's not after the project has been advertised that you then go out and try to figure out what the client wants. Right. You should know all this stuff because you've been talking with them for months or years beforehand. Yeah. yeah. You have some kind of relationship there that you've, you know, it's you're not coming into it cold, ideally. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, there's that R word again, and that's relationship. And it's it, we've discussed it in other programs, and just the importance of picking up the phone, um, physically going to see someone, having a conversation with them, understanding where they are and what they need. Yeah, before beforehand, before um, they're trying to hire you. So it makes you seem a lot less self-serving, I yeah. think, if you can do that. Uh, uh, you know, earlier in the process. Yeah, absolutely. Well, it's a much easier call when you actually yeah. do have something to offer them. Well, some of them won't even talk to you if it's if the RFP is already out. Right. They're prohibited from talking to you, so yeah. it's too late. Absolutely, absolutely. So, all right, so now that we've done our homework, rolled up our sleeves some, it's time to get creative. You mentioned, you know, using more photos of the project and project site. Why, why is that important? Because it's visual. It shows you did your homework. I mean, there are many other things you can do, too. Right. And we're going to talk about some of those other things. But you just you made mm -hmm. it a point to highlight the, the importance of getting photos of the project and project site. So I, I think it shows that you've done more work. It, it's the same thing. My students right now are in the midst of doing their consulting presentations um, at the Walton College of Business here in spring semester in my class. Um, which is called small enterprise management, mm -hmm. they have to work with an area business to increase revenues and reduce risk and increase profits and so on. In uh, any case, um, they don't get real prescriptive with their investigative formula that they can go through. Right. But the ones who take photos of what's happening in the business, of the people, of the conditions, of things they're doing wrong, of competitors, it shows they did their homework. I, I can guarantee I'm, I'm more favorably impressed with them than the ones that come in. They got nothing. Yeah. Doesn't look like they worked very hard. Yeah. Everybody likes somebody that's working hard for them. You know, think about that. Yeah. It does make a difference. It does make a difference. And, you know, they say a picture's worth a thousand that's words. Nice. Yep. So we All love right. cliches. Yeah, we do. We do. <laughs> How about implementing videos in these presentations? Is, is there anything we should stay away from on the subject of videos when it comes to presentations? Well, I think the main thing is you got to make sure that they're going to work. I can't tell you how many times I've seen embedded videos and PowerPoints that people oh, yeah. can't get to operate because they don't know what the equipment is or the sound system at the clients where they're doing the presentation. That's bad. Right. Okay. I mean, you don't want to be in that situation disrupts everything. Then it's like, well, I don't know how we can get the sound on. Everybody goes into a tizzy. The whole thing breaks down. You lose all your momentum. Everybody gets nervous. <laughs> That's bad. So if you're going to have any video, make darn sure you know for certain you can play it and you'll be able to hear the sound. That's that's one piece of advice. I think the other one is just don't make them so long. Yeah. And, yeah. and make them interesting. You know, there's good creative videographers that are out there who can help you if you don't you know you don't have to do everything yourself which of course is sounds like you know heresy to most of these people they all try to do everything themselves in the AE business right, right. but getting somebody who really knows how to make good videos is well worth it yeah, yeah you know they'll they'll help you make it more interesting they understand that 
you can't just have these long single shots of something or somebody talking with no change. It's too boring. You know, you got to switch cameras. You got to look at different things along the way. You got to show exhibits. I mean, a good videographer is well worth it and uh, will be so much more watchable yeah. than uh, somebody who doesn't understand basic concepts about it. You can't do everything yourself. Yeah. Well, I know even for us, I mean, our, our video game has gone through the roof since we hired an amazing, talented person yeah. uh, on our team to do so many amazing things for us. And, and uh, I mean, uh, she's been, Margo's been great. And, um, you know, you, sometimes, it, and, I, and I would imagine that engineers and architects being the type of people that they are, a lot of them feel like, oh, I'm already talented at this. I can just throw the video together or I can do, yeah. go out and take these photos. But, you know, get a, get a professional. Get a professional to help you out, and it will be money well spent, and you'll save yourself in the long run. Because I guarantee you, some of your peers will not do that. And, and in those competing presentations, if you're the only one that has had, had a professional pull, pull together photos, or has had a professional pull together videos. And graphic design. And graphic design. Thank you for way, mentioning that. By the way, because yes. there's so much bad graphic design yes. I see. It's yes. horrible. It's, yeah. Horrifying, right? Yeah, it's, it, it's just it's mind-boggling. We just had a client recently that that went, you know, created a new logo for themselves, and it, it's just so amateurish. <laughs> it's mind-boggling to me, you know. <laughs> and it, they're probably really a firm is. that's making pretty good money too. It, 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 it's like I could have done better on on Microsoft Works, <laughs> which, if you remember, was like Microsoft Office right. Lite. <laughs> For your home computer, without all the bells. And Twenty whistles. years ago, yeah. I could have done a better logo uh, on it than uh, they got. But yeah, uh, yeah it's it, it, good design is in, is invaluable and good um, people who know how to use the technologies that are out there. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Now, this next thing I want to talk about is something that you know I think we have endeavored to do on these videos. Um, we didn't want to create. Um, a training or, or continuing ed video that was just stoic and you know buttoned up and all prim and proper. I mean, we try to provide high quality information, but you know, no, that's I, we're not prim and proper. I spilled it, coffee on my shirt before this. That, that that's okay. Hopefully, we'll, that's and we'll let that slide. That won't be. You won't see that on this on the computer <laughs> anyway. But I've always said that people remember people who make them laugh. Yeah. Do you think injecting some humor into the presentation is appropriate? As long as it's in good taste. Okay. Okay. I mean, you know, that takes a little bit of judgment. Okay. But yeah, absolutely. I, I mean, everybody's too uptight. Yeah. We all need a laugh. Yeah. And it, it really yeah. breaks down the, the barriers if you can get people to laugh. Everybody likes to laugh. Making fun of yourself is usually a safe topic. Nobody can fault you for that. No, and, absolutely. Uh, so you know, self-deprecating humor. Yeah, maybe you want to stay away from politics, though. Maybe you should stay away from religion. Maybe you should even stay away from your ex-wife, which is a, is a territory <laughs> I've strayed into before. So. But uh, no, you, you, or ex-wives, however <laughs> many there may be. But uh, seriously, um, yeah, keep it tasteful. But absolutely, I think uh, you know we all need to laugh, and if you can get people to laugh, they're going to like you. Yeah. Absolutely. And if they like you, they're more likely to trust you. Yeah. And if they trust you, more likely to hire you. Exactly. So no like and trust. We, that that's a that's a uh, a phrase that we've said quite a bit. It's a here. cornerstone. It is a cornerstone. Um, and I, and I'll just add this, especially from the humor piece. And and I've talked about this in some of our leadership trainings, uh, and we will talk about this in some future videos that we do. And it's the importance. The humor is is really really important, especially when when speaking in any way, shape, or form to any audience, large or small, um, and improvisation and being willing to be flexible as things change, as, as the dynamic of, uh, of a conversation changes, it's important to be flexible and be able to go with the flow. That's a really good point, too. Yeah, so. I've seen situations where people were so well rehearsed and so tightly scripted that if anybody throws a bomb into it, <laughs> in the selection committee and ask the question, the whole thing falls completely apart. Right, right. And I've right. witnessed that Yeah. where, where you know, it, it, it blows you away where these people are so well prepped and so well scripted, yeah. but they can't stray from the script. Yeah. Bad, yeah. very well, bad. You, well, can't, and, you don't know what's gonna happen when you, you get in there. And you really don't, and you know? so you can't go into it, you know, with, um, 
you know, so uptight and so concerned that if you fall off, fall off script that everything's going to go to pot. The reality is, is that in that case that you just described, Mark, one of the best things for anybody doing a presentation is to have um, a, a question or a line of questions that will bring them back to the center of their original topic or theme, because that will help them reconfigure or reset themselves when doing a presentation. And we're going to talk a little bit about why practice is important. And you don't go into this uh, never presenting it before, never coming before somebody to share this information before you actually get in front of the potential client to do a presentation. You want to practice, you know, and I tell people all the time, and this is along the lines of humor. If you if you ever look at any of the major comedians Whenever they do their shows on HBO, that's that's that show is the equivalent of them going out and presenting that material hundreds of times before they ever fully get it right. And granted, we're not suggesting that you go out and do your presentation 100 times before you present it to a client, but you better well make sure that you take some time to prepare and that you practice and that you present it to as many people as that will listen before you actually go in front of the client, because I guarantee you, you will sound more polished and more prepared and the client will be more impressed with what you have to say. What do you think about that? Don't disagree. Yeah. So it's, uh, yeah, it's essential. Yeah. That's my soapbox. Take the speech. time. Yeah. Take yeah. the time. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, okay. So, so, okay. We're now at the day of the presentation. We have, We've looked at everything that needs to be done as a prelude to physically doing the presentation. We've done our homework. We've learned as much as we can about the client, uh, about the stakeholders involved in this potential project, about even what the capabilities are of our own office. We have put together some visual aids. We've gotten media together. We've gotten great videos. We hired a professional photographer to go out and shoot different aspects of the project site at day and at night. We've done all of that. So, you know, what setup and preparation would you recommend with regard to the day of the presentation? Who should be coming to this presentation? Because I know a lot of firms just say, hey, you're a principal, you're a principal, you're a principal, we're all gonna go, but Actually, two of the three people that you just mentioned probably aren't appropriate to bring to a presentation in the first place. So how do we kind of pull that together? Well, you, obviously, you need whoever it is as the project manager. They're, they're probably the most critical person. Okay. And you've got to find somebody who's well-suited to the client's personality. And, and that has a lot to do with knowing who the client is and knowing who your people are and being perceptive enough to get the right ones in front of the right ones. Yeah. yeah. You know, I, I always love to tell this, this, this story about, so I had a client that had, let's say a dozen principals or more, right. very successful company. And they had an opportunity to go to work for, uh, to interview with a very, very successful hotel development company. Okay. And so they picked whoever was available and, and, the guy they had available, he had a lot of experience. His experience was with Disney Corporation. And, you know, if you know what Disney Corporations like to work with, he's, he was a meat and potatoes guy. He was used to being run through the ringer hard. Uh, his, he was overweight. Uh, his wife was a CPA. He lived in the same three-bedroom, two-bath house he bought 30 years ago. He drove a silver Toyota Camry. He's a very solid guy, okay? Did his job well for Disney. Was able to keep Disney as a client for years, which is very difficult. They're very hard to please. Right, right. All right, but, you know, when they ju said jump, he said how high. They were very responsive, very competent technically. So I'm just, I'm, I'm painting a little picture. So they send this guy to the client. The client that the, he met with is a billionaire, right. okay? Mm -hmm. Who is a high-flying you know, lots of jewelry, goes, you know, skiing in the freaking Alps and has yachts, all right? Plural. <laughs> At, I mean, you don't send out the guy who drives the silver Camry to go meet with the client who has a yacht. Yeah. It, it's just, at the same time, they had other people in their firm who were like that, who drove the BMW 650 
convertibles and, uh, and, and went on ski trips in the Alps. Right. And, and you know, it, that's who they should have sent out. Yeah. They sent the wrong guy. Yeah. And they got nowhere. They didn't even get to second base. Yeah. You know, yeah. just a complete mismatch of personalities. So I've seen this many times. I mean, you know, get the right people out there. Obviously, that's critical. But, you know, I think everybody needs to be relaxed. If you have to travel for the presentation, do it the day before. Yeah. So that's out of the way. and You're not trying to get there and then your flights are delayed and, you know, you miss it. That's ridiculous. All right. You need to leave early. You need to be relaxed. You need to make sure everybody's nice and calm and, and there's loads of time. Time is so crucial. Yeah. Give yourself time so you're not stressed out. Right. You know, even if you're just driving two hours in the car, go early, get there, chill out for a while. You know, I think this is so important. People wait to the last minute. There's some people who will always wait to the last minute yeah. to do anything. I used to travel with a guy who was always late. I'm like, look, I'm never late for a flight. You're always late for a flight. What are you doing wrong? Leave earlier. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I don't know what else to say. No, you're absolutely right. You also mentioned something else, which I well, it wasn't surprising, but I just, I, as I thought about it, I was like, wow, that does make sense. But, you know, you said name tags are important. They are. I, name tags are so important. <laughs> I it's like a, a simple thing. And, and you know what? It's got to be big and it's got to have a big first name. So if you take the name tag and you divide it in half, the upper half and the lower half, the upper half should just say John, Sue, Bob. Leroy, whatever the hell your name is, okay? Yeah. And then underneath it, it's got your full name and the company. Yeah. This is so crazy because I want that selection committee addressing me by my name. Absolutely. And they won't remember everybody's name. Yeah. You go in there, you introduce yourself. They don't remember you. Even if your names are all written down on a handout, they still don't remember who you are. Mm. Or you hand them a picture and you can't tell who's who from the picture. Because yeah. the picture is 20 years old and everybody looks a lot different. <laughs> I don't know if you ever see. I get a kick out of these realtors cards. Oh, yeah. You ever see? Here like in Arkansas. High school photos. Yeah, we've got these like blonde, <laughs> you know, they look like they're 25. Right. And then when you meet them, you know, it's like <laughs> right. a 60 year old lady. Right. Been using the same picture all that time <laughs> trying to entice people so. to, to call them as a realtor. It's funny. Yeah. But no, I think that big name tag, you know, and if you know who they are, have some kind of tent signs even for them so you can address them by name. Yeah. So if they're calling you Mark and you're calling them Bob and it's going back and forth and Linda is, you know, you'll have, you'll get a lot farther in terms of establishing some rapport yeah. than if they can't even remember your name. Yeah. Because you don't, or you've got this little tiny name tag that's gold that, can read. that you wear to the ASCE meetings. Right. Okay, right. and you got to get like 12 inches away to read it. Oh, hi, uh, Randy. Good to see you again. You see what I mean? Yeah, doesn't work. What's your name again? Oh, yeah, yeah, Randy. Oh, no, I don't want that. Yeah, that's funny. That's funny. Well, that and that, that's actually a good point. And it's something that we've employed even in some of our in-house trainings that we do. And we make sure that we have name tags for people because I'm terrible with remembering names. But it is one of the sweetest sounds that people hear is their name being said. Mm -hmm. And you've got to do it. So, uh, And piggybacking on that idea, one thing that I do before I start a seminar, which is a presentation of sorts, is I walk around the room and shake as many hands of the participants as possible, introducing myself thanking them for coming out. Do you suggest something like that when it comes to dealing with the selection committee before a presentation? Oh, starts? absolutely. I love that. Yeah. And I always tell my students, um, Beck, we just got second prize in the Arkansas Governor's Cup business plan competition for agricultural businesses last week. And, uh, and I told my students that we're doing it there. I said, do not go in that room and then start fooling around, getting your PowerPoint going and everything and making sure that's all right and ignore the, the judges that are all sitting right there. There's five judges. Go up to those judges, introduce yourself, tell them who you are, shake their hand, where you're from, ask them something about themselves. Guaranteed to do better if you do that. Absolutely. Every Absolutely. single time. Yeah. You know, but I see this. It's like it's 10 to 9, the presentation's at 9, the people go up there, they fiddle around with all their exhibits and their screens and their computer and everything else. 
their back is to the selection committee. It's all eight feet away from them. And then precisely at nine, they turn around. Hi, I'm Mark Swig with ABC and Associates. I've totally ignored you like you didn't exist for the last 10 minutes. But now here I am it's animated true. and fake, by the way. Right. It's so true. It's though. just, it, I've seen that so many times. Yeah. Not yeah. the way to build a yeah, relationship. Really. Yeah. You know? I mean, honestly, that, that piece of advice right there is probably worth the price of admission because if you get that, that will go a long way with establishing some rapport with the people that ultimately are going to have your fate in their hands. It's that simple. So, um, all right, so let's move on to the next part. And we talked, we, we alluded to this a little earlier, but how much should you practice before the actual event? How do you anticipate and deal with interruptions? So the practicing is important. You, in, invariably you're going to have some interruptions whenever you do a presentation in most cases and and hopefully people have questions but how do you deal with the practice piece of it the interruptions what do you what would you say i think the most important thing you know i don't i can't say how much you have to practice obviously everybody's different some yeah. people need more practice some people maybe need less yeah but what's critical is having somebody critique what you do yeah do a dry run mm -hmm. and have somebody or some bodies who are really critical. I always said if you can get your spouse involved, you'd mm -hmm. really get some honest feedback. Yeah. You know, uh, from most of these people, like, why do you keep saying um, John? <laughs> you know, I got I, I have a uh, uh, somebody that comes in. He's a business owner and does every year. He talks to my students, and the guy says, and so on and so forth, so much that if he ever had any honest feedback from anyone who watched him present, they would say, why do you keep saying, and so on and so forth? Just stop <laughs> saying that. That's annoying. Ban it. Okay. Yeah. I remember we had this guy back in the day, I was working with T.Y. Lynn long ago out in San Francisco. And uh, we had a guy who was, uh, was our chief bridge engineer. And uh, he was an older fellow then. I think he's even still alive now. He must be 95 or something. <laughs> but uh, he was a great guy, but he had this bad habit. He always had his hands in his pockets, jingling his change. And just, you know, I've got to say to him, look, so-and-so, get your hands out of your pockets, for God's <laughs> sakes. Stop. Right. Stop putting him in. No one ever talked to him like that before. Yeah. No one ever gave him any honest feedback. Yeah. You know, because he was older and he was the senior guy. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So you need somebody that critiques you. You know, videos are always great. You can go back and look at yourself and go, why did I do that? Yeah. yeah. You know, you've got to be conscious. Everybody develops these annoying interpersonal little things, uh, you know. Quirks, little speech Tips, mannerisms, habits, yeah. yeah, yeah, the way you, the look on your face or your posture or whatever, yeah. you know, I gotta mean, be careful about it. Yeah, and and even one thing, and I and I even I record everything that I do uh, when I'm doing uh, when I'm speaking. If I do a Zwag seminar or anything like that, I record everything because I always want to go back and listen to how I delivered it what really worked based on the audience response and all that other stuff. Now, granted, that's for something that I'll do over and over again, but for some of you that are watching this video, you're gonna, if you have some success presenting proposals and uh, doing presentations, you're gonna be asked to do it more and more. And this is an area that you can continue to perfect and refine. I had this one client, every time he, he would give a presentation, he would start getting nervous and he'd go, and he pushes glasses up with his finger or, or just his nose, just like this, like a pig. <laughs> even, even worse. And you'd be talking and you'd look up his nostrils. Oh, and it was man. such an annoying thing that you couldn't wait for him just to shut up. Yeah. Because it didn't matter what he had to say at some point. Mm -hmm. All you knew was you were looking up his nostrils and it wasn't pretty. What you didn't want you know, to do. It, yeah. it, it just, you've got to be cognizant of these things. Yeah. That's yeah. why I think the video and, and the video and or critique by someone who will be honest with you is so invaluable. Yeah. We, we all need it. I mean, everybody falls into these habits. Oh, absolutely. You know? Absolutely. Yeah. And, and uh, certainly, I think you, the only way that you'll get better is by asking people to give you an honest assessment, not a, I still want to be your friend assessment. Give, yeah. Ask them for an honest assessment. 
because if they really care about you and they consider themselves a friend or a good colleague, they'll let you know, hey, that didn't work or maybe you shouldn't pick your nose while you do your presentation. I don't know. Whatever it is, yeah. the bottom line is you want someone to be honest with you. So. Yeah, I mean, people have to look at, at their audience, too, when they're talking. Oh, we, yeah. We've yeah. all heard that Absolutely. joke about the how you can tell when you've got an extroverted engineer. Oh. They're looking at your feet while they're talking. <laughs> Uh, and uh, well, I, you know, I mean, there's some truth to that. I mean, is. if you don't look at people, they it, it's it's just bad. Well, and I'm and I'm gonna you know? I'm gonna let me add a story to that because it makes perfect sense. And I've told the story before, but one of the things, and and you know, I don't care where you fall on the political spectrum, but but Bill Clinton has an uncanny, or I would say had past sense, but still has an uncanny ability to engage people in small environments and. Um, Back in, in a former life, uh, when I worked in Washington, D.C., I had a chance to be in a couple of events with him um, where he was kind of mingling with people. And I, the thing I noticed about him more than anything else, and other people have said the same thing. I mean, he's a great speaker, but, you know, when he would engage an individual, even if it was just one-on-one, -on -one, he would look at that person directly in the eye and really talk with them. He wouldn't, you know, too often we go to these events and we look past an individual so I can get to, like, I'm looking past you so I can get to Margot because I want to talk to her. Yeah. You know, every person that he talked to was, they felt like I was the only person in the room that he was talking to. And then grab that elbow and pump right, that. Right, exactly. Yeah. No, no, I mean, but it's true, though. It, it is really true. is. It is and, true. And it's, yeah, you really, it really is invaluable. Again, you make people like you. Yeah. Yeah, you know, if they like the you, they, they look past your your weaknesses. They look past your mistakes. Absolutely. Eye and, contact. And there's something so about important. it. Yeah, there's something it's about so it. So important. All right. So so as we talk about some other things to do in terms of preparation, in terms of actually the day of the presentation, you know, should people bring additional materials with them to the presentation, like leave behinds? What would, I be, love what stuff. would be appropriate? Yeah, I love if you can leave something behind. We were going after a big bridge project. I'll never forget this. It was a team, and I was managing the presentation and proposal process. Mm -hmm. And it was CH2M Hill and TY Lynn. And uh, anyway, uh, so we did, it was a Benicia Martinez bridge, and there were two bridges there, and this was the third bridge that was going yeah. in. Mm -hmm. So we did an aerial view of what it would look like. It had a giant four by eight sheet aerial photograph. Okay. Uh, of the site with the new bridge laid in, okay? And yeah. then we had a title block on that that said, you know, TY Lynn, CH2M Hill for Caltrans or whatever it was. And and they loved that so much. It, we, we brought that to the presentation. Well, they wanted that, that four by eight, because they could show everybody, this is our project. Right. Okay, the, yeah. the DOT. Yeah. So we left that behind. It was about a $2,400 exhibit. I remember, that's what it cost us, 2,400 bucks. Wow. We conveniently left that behind. Well, there's our names on it. And they're showing that to everybody. I mean, think about the implications of that. And you won the job. Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. Yeah. That's there the point. I if mean, we didn't win the job, I wouldn't right. be telling you Yeah, that. exactly. That's a but, mic drop uh, <laughs> moment right there. So. But no, I mean, that it, it works. There's a lot of things you can leave behind. People are, if they can hold something in their hand, you know, mm -hmm. I already gave you the example of the carpet squares. Right. Right. But uh, I've seen everything from products that'll be made in that facility and having examples of that or material that comes out of it, um, being able to share that with people. You know, I, 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 we were involved once with a, with a project that um, did automotive plastic recycling. Mm -hmm. And we had uh, the plastic beads that would be created by the process. Uh, uh, the recycling process of pulling the plastic out, cleaning it, and cutting it up into these tiny little beads. Right. And we handed baggies of those out to everybody so they could sit there and play with the plastic beads. I mean, I think it's, you know, yeah, yeah, it, right. it, it, it's, it's really important. It is. And it, it, to me, it's, people will remember. The more senses they use, the more likely they are to remember you. Yeah. You know? So it, it sounds like what you're saying is that a firm should definitely go above and beyond to consider what would be an appropriate leave behind mm -hmm. based on the type of product uh, project that you're working on and, and um, hopefully come up with something that makes sense and that people will resonate with post the presentation. Yeah, so. it's not just, um, you know, 
specialty advertising products. Right. Here's some pens with our name, Here's ABC swag, Associates. Yeah. 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 Yeah, that's, or like that's, we've got socks or yeah. something. Can you imagine we did a presentation and then, by the way, Mr. Client, here are some Zwy Group socks. We'll be glad to leave with you. Yeah, Zwy Group mouse pads. You know, I've sure. got a, I got a banker. Every time he comes to see me, he brings me a box of pens. Oh yeah, I yeah. have boxes and boxes of pens. He wants you to write checks. You know, yeah. I and I love the guy, but I mean, <laughs> so, at some point, I've got yeah. probably like a lifetime supply yeah, of let's, pens. Let's now. come up with some different things, some different items. So. Yeah. Um, all right. Well, so you've given us a ton to think about as we develop our presentation skills. Um, with regard to making uh, to to making sure that we are registering with our audience, is there anything else that you'd recommend that we do um, to make sure that our presentations are not falling on deaf ears? Well, I mean, again, I think employing more of their senses. Okay. Hearing, seeing, smelling, touching, those are all good things. Okay. Probably little that they can taste. Okay. But, uh, you know, I, one, one of the things I'm always very conscious of that we hadn't really talked about is, you know, it, it, looking like you've got your act together <laughs> and, and looking like count. you're coordinated. Yeah, yeah. appearance is everything. Yeah. First thing you got to do is tell everybody, never talk over another presenter. I see that often. And that never contradict. That's even worse. One person says something and they're like, well, actually, that's not the case. That looks terrible. Even if they're dead wrong, right? you can't do it. You just can't do it. So, you know, but I remember one time, again, uh, when we were going after that seismic retrofitting of the Golden Gate Bridge, we had a team that had, I don't know, 12, 13 different companies on it. Mm -hmm. We couldn't say we've all worked together. We had MBEs and WBEs and DBEs and aerodynamic consultants and fender designers and seismic experts and bridge architects and whatever, okay? We had mm -hmm. everybody under the sun, all these different specialists, geotechs. We had African Americans, we had Asians, we had Indian Asian Sikhs with turbans, mm -hmm. we had old white guys, we had young women, we had the most diverse team you've ever seen in your life, okay? Mm -hmm. Just imagine a complete melting pot, basically representative of- The United know, Nations. Practically anybody <laughs> that lives in this country was represented by somebody on this team. Right. And every discipline under the sun. Okay. And we couldn't go in there and go, well, we've all worked together before on this job, this job, this job, because we hadn't all worked together. Some of them had worked together, we'd work with some, They, some of them had worked with others, but no, no job did this entire team work together. So one of the things we did that, that connoted, um, you know, communicated uh, uh, togetherness was we said, everybody's got a blue blazer, right? Everybody's like, yep. So everybody wore a blue blazer. And then we went to the gift shop at uh, the Golden Gate Bridge or, or Fisherman's Wharf mm -hmm. and got Golden Gate Bridge lapel pins. And everybody put one of those on, okay? So you go in there like the Century 21 team. Right, right. And it just immediately looks like, oh, man, these guys have their shit together. Yeah. I mean, think about all the other teams that weren't like that. Yeah. So that visual made a big, big difference. And I th I'm absolutely convinced that it had to help us win that job. Was that a moment of inspiration or was that planned well ahead? Oh, that, that was pin? planned. It was planned. Absolutely See, yeah, planned. I like that. I, that's a nice touch. Yeah. That's a really nice touch. We, we said, you know, what are we going to do to look like we're together? Yeah. And then it just came up, you know, yeah. what kind of clothing item does everybody have in their wardrobe somewhere? Yeah. Blue blazer. And, and you, you know, since we bring that up and, and, and as we're, we're coming to a close here, I, wa I wanted to ask you how much involvement would the marketing team have on this? Plenty in my mind. Okay. okay. The worst thing that I see in the AE business is the people who have the intel on what the client really wants never communicate that to the to the marketing people who do the proposal or the qual doc. Right. That's insane. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then the next thing is then when we get a presentation, we don't involve involve the marketing people at all. That's all done by the technical people. I don't get that. I, I just don't get it. So the marketing people are invaluable. Yeah. They know how to make stuff look good. They know how to communicate a message. Why cut them out? Yeah. 
Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I don't understand it. It's just, it's either insecurity or it's territoriality or yeah. fear of wanting to give some credit to somebody else or acknowledge their contribution. You know, of course they've got something to offer. We need the marketing people. We need the technical people. We need the design Everybody. people. Everybody. Okay. Everybody has to play a role in yeah. it. And you don't want to demotivate anybody So on your team. I so. want to demotivate them, but I don't want to make the team do without their yeah. expertise. Yeah, yeah. You know, maybe so. even more importantly. Yeah, that's yeah, that's spot on. That is spot on. Well, I mean, Mark, you've shared so much today. Uh, we really appreciate you sharing so many great tips on um, creating better presentations. Uh, do you have any final thoughts to share before we close out this Z Learning session? You can do better. I, I just I have to me say. Personally, no, me, no. I, need to, I know I'm being uh, funny. <laughs> folks, you can do better. <laughs> Spend some time on this stuff instead of making it something that you have to do and rushing through it. Spend time to do something unique and memorable and really good, and it will pay huge dividends for you. We go through all the trouble, all the business development all the, the proposal and qual document, and then throw the presentation together at the last minute with no oversight and go do it. I, I just don't understand that. It's, it's a crazy. It's for disaster. It is. Yeah. Increase your win rate by doing better presentations. You're in control of it. You can make it happen. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's and I'm sure we could have gone through a, a, a litany of some of the presentations that didn't go the way you had planned, and, and I would imagine that a lot of them fell flat because of what you just described, just not doing. Well, I've learned a lot along the way. Right. So I always say you can learn from your failures. Yeah, and there's absolutely. no question about it. You can. Absolutely. I want to thank you for watching this Z Learning episode on how you can be more successful through doing better presentations. Remember, in order to get continuing education credit, you must follow the instructions in the email that came along with this video. Complete a short quiz and a certificate will be provided to you immediately. If you'd like to share this video with your office in a lunch and learn format, you can do so easily. You only need to purchase additional quizzes for the number of people that watch the video and want to get their continuing education credit. Check your email when you order this video for additional information. You can always email us here at, at elearning at zweigroup.com. You can also email us with any feedback or thoughts too. We love feedback and we especially love to hear from anyone that was impacted in a positive way by this video training. Stay tuned for our next Z Learning class, Managing Millennials, what you can do to be more effective. Whether you are looking for online continuing education classes in project management, business development, marketing, leadership, or financial management for AEC professionals, Z Learning has got you covered. Zwy Group's Z Learning offers fresh and relevant content that won't put you to sleep. Visit us at zweigroup.com forward slash zlearning for more information and a list of our classes and services. Until the next CEU, we'll see you later. That was perfect. Good job, man. Good job. That was really good. I like that one. That was really good.